There's a saying in Hong Kong Kung Fu movies. It means only speed is unbreakable. That's in Cantonese, a language with tones, which English speakers have trouble distinguishing. So when an American says that phrase with the wrong tones, you get a Cantonese meme. It became kind of a joke that people will send to each other. It's like, oh, this badass Wi-Fi is so good. Wi-Fi, my It's quite funny. <laughs> if English is your first language, though, you might be more familiar with a different joke. Supplies! That's the notion that East Asians mix up their R's and L's in English. It's a running gag in Lost in Translation, an Oscar-winning film about two Americans who are sad in Japan. Lat pak, you know lat pak? Rat, rat pak? Rat pak. The movie oh, makes communication with the locals seem hopeless. Lip my stocking! Hey, lip hey. them! And at one point, Scarlett Johansson's character asks, Why do they switch the R's and the L's here? Well, for yucks. This movie might be a bit rude, but it's not a terrible question to ask. Because if you're genuinely curious, a foreign accent gives us a chance to learn something about another language. So this trope has been applied to Japanese, Korean, and Chinese speakers. But all of these languages deal with R's and L's in different ways. First, though, we need to talk about the R sound in English. It turns out there isn't just one way to pronounce it. Oh, it's, it's incredibly varied. Eleanor Lawson uses ultrasound to study English phonetics. I have chilled R's, which are a sort of a R sound. You can probably hear my tapped R, so I do a R sound, varied. You can have a retroflex R, where your tongue essentially curls upside down under your palatal arch. Run. One. She says the bunched R, which is common in North American English, is particularly complex. Nurse. Nurse. Say the word fur. Fur. How would you tell someone where to put their tongue to make that R? The middle of the tongue rises up in the mouth while the root of the tongue is pulling backwards. And you might have some lip rounding as well. Er. R sounds like this, where the airflow isn't blocked by the tongue or the lips, are called approximates in phonetics. So forming all of these structures at the same time could be very difficult for someone who's not used to producing that. The R sound is one of the last consonants that English-speaking kids learn to say. It takes up to five adorable years for them to figure it out. And, red. and the L sound in English can change depending on its position in a word. Say the word ladle or level, level. That first L is a clear L. You can probably feel your tongue touching the top of your mouth right behind your teeth, as in lead. But the L at the end of the word is a dark L, where the tip of the tongue might not even touch the top of your mouth at all. A dark L is where the back of the tongue is moving up towards the soft palate and it gives it a, a sort of O-ish sound, so a, like an O, O. Level. Level. So the English R and L are complicated, but still, let's pack. Ol, er, they seem like pretty different sounds. It might help to look at Spanish. Say the word salero. Salero, salt shaker. Salero, salero. This R is made with a flap of the tongue on the ridge behind the front teeth. That's not too far away from where the L is pronounced. Salero, ora, varios, oruga, pare. Japanese has that R sound. It doesn't have the lol in lake or the roar in red. We have rarirurero, which sounds kind of similar to both L and R. Those are the five syllables in Japanese that contain the tongue flap sound. Rarirurero. Try saying them. Rarirurero. When they're converted into the Latin alphabet, they're spelled like this with the letter R. But the Japanese R sound la. is actually closer to our L sound, la, than it is to the English ra. My name is Mariko, and for all of my English-speaking friends, their intuition to say is Mariko. And then how I like, explain to them is like, I just imagine like, you know, my name spelled with M-A-L-I-K-O, and then you should be fine. When words migrate from English to Japanese, both R's and L's become Japanese R's. Garasu, kalenda, boring. Light. There are thousands of these loan words that Japanese speakers have to relearn with ers and uls, which are two sounds that Japanese ears weren't tuned to distinguish in the first place. 
Like Japanese, Korean doesn't have the English er sound. They have this letter. It's lier. 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 Like my tongue is going straight up to the roof of my mouth. Lier. It takes on a different sound depending on its position within the word. So when it's followed by a vowel, it has the flap sound like a Japanese R. Turisa, turisa. That also means it's written with the letter R when converted into Latin script. Turisa. But when it's at the end of a word, tebal, or is followed by a consonant, tlida, it sounds more like an L sound, and it's transcribed in the Latin alphabet as L. So it's pretty unlikely that Korean speakers would say hero since their L sound can map on to the English L. But the dark L doesn't exist in Korean. So when they're new to English, Koreans might use their own L sound in spots where we would use a dark L near the ends of words. As the story unfurls, someone may change the word. There are at least eight major Chinese languages, but we'll look at Mandarin and Cantonese. They both have a clear L sound, and it's restricted to the beginning of syllables. Lang is like pretty. La, drag. So the notion that they would switch fa la la into fa ra ra, it's just wrong. And the makers of A Christmas Story should feel bad. <laughs> like Korean, Mandarin and Cantonese don't have the dark L sound, as in pull. But when they come across an L near the end of a word in English, they tend to pronounce it more like a vowel. A wow. hundred years old, ninety years old, I said, we should respect this kind of people. He chose the coldest possible, <laughs> really. Mandarin does have an R sound. At the beginning of a syllable, it sounds like this. <laughs> so like actually maybe the R is like sounds more like the S in treasure. <laughs> and at the end of a syllable, R. Uh, it means sun. Cantonese, on the other hand, doesn't have an R sound at all. So when speaking English, they sometimes use a W sound or an L sound. You know, we just uh, tried very hard to, to prove ourselves. Our ability to produce sounds in a new language depends in part on whether those sounds are meaningfully distinct in our first language. So a Japanese speaker hearing ul and er it's a lot like an English speaker hearing tones in Chinese. Lang, 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 lang. Ma, 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 ma. Yeah, so I know people's mind just blown away. <laughs> <laughs> we all carry the rules of our native language with us when we learn new languages. Accent is your identity. So I don't want to sound like an American person or British person. So if you hear a foreign accent, remember that it's a unique hybrid. It's like a lion with stripes, something you can only get if you're brave enough to venture beyond the comfort of your mother tongue. If you enjoyed this video, you're probably the kind of person who likes learning about complex topics through digestible, interactive lessons, like the course on logic from Brilliant. Brilliant is a problem-solving website that teaches you to think like a scientist. They have courses on everything from calculus to astronomy and daily problems in math and science. To learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org vox and sign up for free. The first 200 people to visit that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription, which gives you access to all of the daily problems and unlocks all of the courses. Brilliant wasn't involved in the making of this video, but their support makes videos like this one possible. So go check them out.